Hi there, D.W. Berman here with another Lightwave video. This will be a short one, um, I think. <laughs> they tend to go longer than I expect them to sometimes. What I have here is I have a sphere. It's just a ball. And if I uncheck the smoothing, you'll see I have all the facets that make up the ball. And what if it would be... What if you wanted to kind of blend between these two things? How would you do that? I was uh, looking at a thread on Nutex forum about DP Kit's edge shader, but uh, that had an example in there that kind of gave me the idea for this. So basically, what I'm doing, uh, I'm running a spot info node, which I got down here, spot info, um, and I ran the geometric normal into the background color of a mixer and the smooth normal into the foreground color of the mixer. And I have that going to a transform and into the normal. And the reason for the transform node, and that is under math vector transform, is I can't directly plug a red channel into the blue output, into the normal output. So I have to run it through a transform node. What this lets me do is this lets me kind of change the opacity on this on this faceted version. I, I'm blending between the geometric normal and the smooth normal. And uh, that's kind of interesting. I can make it 50% so it's kind of smooth, but you can still see the facets. I can, you know, pump it up so it's almost all the way gone, but not completely. Uh, and, you know, that's cool and all. And if you want if you have something where you need to blend between the two things, it's probably easier and quicker to do it in here than it is to uh, render out two separate passes and blend them in post. Um, however, since this is the, a node editor, we can plug other things into the opacity instead of just uh, playing with this number. Um, I can plug, say for instance, this. I have this turbulence texture here that uh, is just black to white. I'll just plug the color and I guess I could use opacity or, or alpha. I'll just plug this into the opacity. And you can see now it's smooth in some areas and uh, faceted in others. So if I scroll through this, I have this texture animating. So you'll see that the smooth areas are changing. So if you wanted to do some weird, I don't know what you want to use that for, but I'm sure there are some special effects kind of a thing you could use with that. We can also add a, uh, what's it called? A shader? Shader, shader, shader. Where are they? Shaders. Diffuse. I'll just plug a Lambert in. And a Lambert is basically what you're seeing here. Where it's, these shaders are basically how the light, how the surface interacts with lights coming onto it. So if I plug this in here, you'll see the area where the light is hitting this is, uh, smooth and the area where the goes to the shadows is not smooth um, and if I rotate a light around you'll see that changing see how it's smooth in the middle but faceted on the edge and that's all kind of cool I mean I'm sure you can come up with something interesting to do, do with that however I've in experimenting I found some other interesting things I can over pump this. If I want to make a pillowed effect around all of the uh, polygons, I just need to increase the opacity. And you know, of course, the higher I increase it, increase it, the uh, greater the effect. So now it's like we have a normal map on there that's been painted specifically to cover every single polygon and make it puff out. But that's not the case. It's just puffing out every single polygon. So that'd be great for doing a quilted uh, material or uh, something like that, especially if you didn't want to add the extra geometry. We can also run this into the negative and uh, have the, the concave look. Not exactly a golf ball, but uh, something similar to that. I'm sure there are materials like that. And again, if we make it really high... We can make it really pronounced and make it look like those are deep. And we can also change the blending mode. Let me pump this up to 100. If I, a lot of the blending modes don't seem to do much, but subtractive definitely does. And that's uh, an interesting effect. 
Here's another object with another surface on it that kind of has a similar thing. Of course, with sub patches, you don't really see the true wireframe, so this would basically really only work with uh, a wireframe or in conjunction with another shader that shows the the true uh, geometry. But uh, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. If you look down on the arms, you can kind of get a feel for how you could do a padded padded clothing thing. So that is the little lesson this week. It's not much. It's just basically an experiment. Um, a fun little experiment, I thought, and there might be some interesting applications for this. So uh, I hope this helps somebody get some ideas for doing something. Um, please subscribe to this channel so you can catch updates whenever I get around to making them, and also check out my tutorials at liberty3d.com. And uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.